Here are my ups and downs from Wolfpack Season 1, Episode 103, Origin Point. Credited writer is Crystal Houghton Ziv, directed by Joe Janier, with Dave Daniel as director of photography. Again, if you didn't see last week's installment, this ups and downs thing is a direct ripoff from another channel I like a lot called Trek Culture. And this video contains spoilers for the first three episodes of Wolfpack. So go over and watch the show on Paramount Plus before joining me back here. I'm giving a major up for this entire opening sequence. It's beautifully conceived and executed. The dialogue here is all explication, but it's rendered naturally and believably in teen speed. It's a fire line over there that contained that part. You see the stone ridges? That's where they're saying the origin point is. And there's a sense of genuine menace up here even before our big wolf shows up. There are some minor issues with the CGI lighting, but that could just be my monitor. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't detract because this is just a gorgeous sequence and worthy of a huge up. That's followed by an early down. Uh, we were just here to see fire. This cardboard cutout bad cop. Y'all, I'm telling you, it is an overused trope. This is lazy writing shorthand for when you don't want to give your character genuine motivation. You just slap a uniform on them and hope the audience will go, well, you know how those people are. This police bad thing is pervasive in current media, and at this point, it's just boring. So a major down there for me. You know what? I'm going to give this a down for the series to date. I mean, Lanny June's character is literally described as a blunt instrument in the pilot episode. No talking. But he's just mean, without any provocation or motivation. Whispering is talking. Just a mean guy. And this guy would not be able to survive in any real-world working environment anywhere for very long. Look, I understand there are genuinely mean cops. I've met some, but it's not really interesting to watch without giving even a tiny bit of depth to these characters. Okay, let's clean the palette with an up for the week. The chemistry between the pack of four and the very genuine friendship we see growing between Blake and Everett. Like this. And up for Armani for another beat perfect depiction of someone going through an anxiety attack. There's also a sense in this scene of the strong supernatural bond that already exists among these near strangers. And that leads me to my up above all ups this week the shared hearing thing. I took an edible. Did you hear that? Everett, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you too. So can I. Oh my god. This is fucking amazing. Now, I initially mistook this for telepathy, and there is some mental component to it, obviously, but they're all sharing Harlan's enhanced hearing. Another up for them actually explaining this point later. I think we can all in the way Harlan can hear. It's like we were sharing it. It's because we're a pack. We're connected. We're not connected. I love it when a show manages to naturally work in canonical rules on screen. The way Jeff Davis has set this up with Harlan and Luna just as confused by what's happening as the newly bitten, it just leaves a lot of room for easy explication. And the relationship between the twins and their dad makes all this explication just flow really naturally. Are you the one in charge? Kristen Ramsey, we're very glad you're okay. You're not talking to my kids without a lawyer present. My lawyer. Fine, call him in. This was a close second for my up above this week. The first meeting between Scully 
and Smolder. I mean, Kristen Ramsey and Ranger Briggs, of course. It's too short, but the chemistry is there for future close encounters. Also an up for Bailey Stender as Phoebe. I love her in this so much. Hey, Phoebe, what'd they ask you? About the fire? You know they think it's one of us. What'd you tell them? That I think it was you. And I mentioned backstory being important to deepen unpleasant characters. In just the few short scenes that have featured Phoebe, we learn exactly why she's a see you next Tuesday. In addition to being privileged and wealthy, this girl's had some recent personal setbacks that will color her outlook. Hey, Harlan, steal anyone's boyfriend lately? Just yours. And it took all of 30 seconds to make her a well-rounded character. So let's talk about the big werewolf. Its presence in episode three is a mix of a couple of ups and one slightly annoying down. Up for overall design. We now had good looks at this creature several times and I absolutely love it. Right up until it's extreme close up. This scene of breaking and murdering the cardboard cop is an up, suitably scary and gross. This scene is a huge up for me because of the way Armani plays it. I understand the director, producer, and editor wanting to linger on this increasingly terrified face. It might have gone on a trace too long for some viewers, but I was completely there with him. Then we finally get some snout. It starts out fine, but then it just misses and lands in the uncanny valley for me. So for me, that's a down. But it is still menacing, and Armani Jackson is selling this. So again, it's an overall up for me on all the monster stuff this week. And one final emotional up. Ranger Briggs admitting the silver bullets are for his children if they ever lose control. You made these? Yes. To kill werewolves? To kill us? Yes. This is just spot on, perfect performance for all involved. Okay, let's head over to canon observation. We get a lot this week as Harlan and Luna struggle with how different their lives have become since meeting the Bitten. We've mentioned before that all the bites are not healing the same. That's now a plot point. It looks like Austin healed completely, similar to Blake and Everett, but he's not connected to them for some reason and is apparently in denial about what he saw in the traffic jam of death. The eye glow thing is completely new for the twin, so not a regular werewolf thing, or maybe, as their father hints, it's just not how it works for werewolves without a pack. I mentioned the shared abilities. We saw hearing and smell shared in this episode. That is going to be fun going forward. Also, these werewolves can smell emotions as they picked up anger from the officer. The general loss of mental control and the lust-filled hallucinations on the full moon continue. Again, this and the ability enhancement is something new for the twins as well. Silver is apparently a deterrent. Maybe. We need to hear more about it, but Ranger Briggs certainly thinks it can stop a werewolf. And the big wolf's motivation seems to have shifted. It no longer seeks to kill Everett and Blake, but many of the other teens still seem like they are fair game for our big antagonist. Again, canonically, we're learning how werewolves work in this universe right along with the characters, which in my opinion is always the best way to do it. Wolfpack streams new episodes Thursday on Paramount+.